at the fifth annual Cloud World Forum speaking to Treb Ryan. Treb has founded several startups in cloud and hosting, running several sales and operations, and is now Chief Strategy Officer at Dimension Data. It's quite a tongue twister. How are you today? Good, good. thanks for having me, Rachel. That's all right, any time. Now, uh, what are the differing concerns for early and late adopters in public cloud solutions? Well, you have to understand the early adopters have been using the cloud or the internet their entire life. Yeah. I mean, you now have users who are entering the workforce who've had internet computing since day one. And their view of technology is way different than the older guys like me, the guys who- And me, I remember. PCs, yeah. right? You know, they expect everything to be immediately available. They expect it to be constantly updated. You know, we talk about the cloud, one of the things uh, the early adopters love is the cloud never runs out. Every time you go to Facebook, they don't say, oh, you can't put this picture up, you're out of space. <laughs> and it's the same thing with cloud computing. Every time you want to add a server or a new sales user, those things are always available. So you have this generation entering the workforce, and to them, you know, traditional client server PC computing looks like mainframes and green screens did to me back in 1988. <laughs> I mean, it's that dated. Wow, 1988. That old, right? But as we see, as much as that generation, what we call cloud generation, is driving the adoption, we still have tons of application and data on more traditional architectures. And now we see the desire from enterprises to adopt these and use this cloud capabilities, you know, to get the hourly pricing and the APIs, but they can't start with all new applications the way the early adopters did. So the early adopters would write their applications specifically for the cloud, and then they could handle things like latency and, and security issues within the application. But existing applications to move over need a cloud that's much more set for a traditional environment. They need higher performance clouds. They need a clouds where security is built into place. So they don't have to rewrite their entire application to use it. And what about the prediction of 41% growth on public cloud? In the very least. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we're you know we're seeing we're seeing that in many of our new regions around the world, we're seeing 100% growth quarter over quarter. Um, Why is in that? More mature areas, it's at at, at least 25% uh, on a quarter basis. Again, think about how much people use technology. You know, I always tell this joke about the average person checks their their mobile phone. 150 times a day. I could, yeah, yeah. My daughter checks her mobile phone once a day <laughs> and never puts it down. Yeah. And now she's a cute girl, she's a high schooler, and thinks she is using technology 10 times more than I did when I was her age. And I was a founding member of the computer club. I was a geek. So when people are using that much technology all the time, the amount we use technology, even in our daily workforce, it's going to drive huge amounts of adoption of those cloud infrastructures because they're really connected doing something on the cloud, whether it's on mobile or on their laptop or on a tablet, almost 24 hours a day. I can believe that. And do you think Europe is now losing the, the race compared to North America and places like Asia? You know, it, it, it's tough because you always kind of see a technology adoption curve that generally tends to start in North America. But from a usage perspective, one of the things that, again, that makes cloud so different is that anybody can buy it any place, any time, and use it any place at any time. And so even when we started with our very first deployment, which was in you know, North America in 2009, 35% of our signups with no advertising, with no other usage, were uh, international. A little weighted more towards Europe than Asia. Yeah. Europe had a little more clients and the clients used it more. You know, there was, there was more going on with it. And our, our second biggest client right out of the gate was a UK-based client that we signed up online because they didn't have to have a UK-based sales force to use cloud. They could just sign up for it online, talk to someone on the phone and get going. So we've seen this as a much more evenly distributed item. Now America still leads in terms of adoption, but as I said, from a growth perspective, our international clients in Europe leading Asia, uh, they're growing at about twice the rate as uh, North America is. Oh, and what about the skill set? Well, compare it to Europe and America. Can you compare it? Yeah, you can because, again, any time we're talking about people who understand cloud, those early adopters, they've grown up you know, writing to Facebook APIs and, and using uh, cloud-based systems. I think the hard part is getting that into a more enterprise context. We used to say at some point in time, they're going to have to stop showing pictures of a, a monkey and start using it to solve real problems. And th that's where the level we're at now is how do we take these skill sets that have created these amazing applications and done these different things and apply them to real money-making problems around enterprise workloads. Who do you think offers the best cloud solution in terms of user experience? You know, you have to be a cloud company. 
Uh, there's no question. Um, you have to understand how people write to these APIs, how to scale this effectively, and how to make it work. You can't just take your existing solution, say, here I have a cloud solution, and just go put it on the internet. Having it on the internet's not enough. It has to have flexibility, scalability, infinite accessibility, all the things that people like about the cloud. And the people who are dedicated to providing those cloud solutions have been much more successful. Now we're seeing on a repeated basis, and of course Dimension Data is part of that, the ability for an enterprise solution to go and adopt and, and acquire these assets. But you know, I talk, we were acquired, we had done well as an independent company, but didn't get into the upper right hand corner of the quadrant until Dimension Data that could put us in six locations around the world, bring a real professional sales force in place, could integrate us with their partners, that allowed us to kind of hit that next level, but you needed that core knowledge that came from being a dedicated cloud provider. Now, a little bit of fun and something a bit different. We've all heard of, uh, of SaaS, so how many as a services can you, I love this already, can you name in uh, cloud computing? I, I, it's so funny, I saw something else, virtual IT as a service, and I realized, you know, uh, my original company was focused on software as a service, but we didn't know what to call it. And it was right when uh, SaaS was coming out, and so we were part of that first group to use the term SaaS. And I, I think when I get to the pearly gate, St. Peter's gonna tell me I can't stay. <laughs> because I've seen that used so many times, even in our own HR department. They came out with HR as a service. Now, I never knew HR was a product. I never knew HR in a box or HR, let's go buy HR at the store. So how is it HR as a service every any other thing? And the best was someone goes, hey look, HR as a service, harass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> got so I think, yes, it's become yeah. the point where, to me, I've seen service as a service. It's just absolutely ridiculous. The key being, it's not really as a service, it's, you know, the reality is that someone who's grown up using internet and mobile doesn't even think about it as a service. They think about that's just how they consume things. And that's what we need to understand about how people adopt this and stop trying to rename everything as a service. Very well answered. Thank you very, very much, Trev. My pleasure. Thank you, Pat. <laughs>